Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Ninas. You are now watching 120 Days to Jam. This is a series containing 120 videos to prepare you for jam. Each episode of the series contains introduction, outline, detailed class, questions, and homework for you. The questions and homework are from the Flash Learners Jam application. Install Flash Learners Jam app today to access all the free features. Click activate and scroll to buy activation key to get access to the golden features. Don't be scared, the app is affordable. Do you have trust issues? Simply chat me directly on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Telegram for installation and activation instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. This is episode number 15 of the 120 Days to Jam Mathematics with Flash IT. In the previous episode, we introduced indices, logarithm, and sort. Today, we shall be taking a look at the laws of indices. Indices represent power, or when you speak of index, you are talking about power. If I say 2 raised to the power of 3, this is an index. This number here is referred to as base, and the number at the top is referred to as power. 2 raised to the power of 3 means multiply 2 3 times. This is simple as 2 times 2 times 2. If we say 2 raised to the power of 4, it means multiply 2 4 times. If I say 4 raised to the power of 2, this is the base and this is power. This means 4 times 4. We can say that if this is referred to how many times a number multiplies itself. To so solve questions under indices, you need to know the laws or rules of indices. What are the rules to follow when dealing with indices? That is what we shall cover in this episode. The first law of indices is the multiplication law. This law states that if you have s times s raised to the power of m times s raised to the power of n, it is the same thing as s raised to the power of n plus n. Look at this. This is s, this is s. Since they are ss, it simply means that if you have two numbers with the same base, what is here should be the same as what is here. Now let's take s to be any number. Let's say 2. Which means if you have 2 times 2 times 2, then this is m, this is m, n. m and n means different numbers, which means what is here is not what is here. Let's take here to be 3 and let's take here to be 4. So if you have 3, then we have 4 here. In this, it says that this, what you are seeing here, is the same thing as 2 raised to the power of 3 plus 4. Since the base are the same, you add the power. So, 2 raised to the power of two, 3 plus 4 is equal to 2 raised to the power of 7. And 2 raised to the power of 7 is 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times two, two seven times multiplying. What does this also imply? It implies that if you have 2 raised to the power of 7, you can simplify it to be 2 raised to the power of 3 times 2 raised to the power of 4. So you can take this to this form or this to this form. So long you didn't change anything. And so long when you punch your calculator, they will give you the same thing. It is very, very fine. And the second law of indices says that if you have s raised to the power of m over s raised to the power of n, this is equals s raised to the power of m minus n. Now here is the interpretation. When you see S in mathematics, or you see Y, or you see any alphabet, don't take it to be, ah, this person is a come and do it. No. They mean unknown. 
We have many numbers in mathematics. 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we cannot give you all the cases. If you are deciding to use all the numbers, it means to have more than one. In fact, <laughs> a lot of laws which we can't follow. So, S here and S here means if you have number here and another number here, which means similar number, if they are 100, 100, 50, 50, 55, 55, irrespective of what they are, and the number at the top is straight to the power of something, then the one at the bottom is straight to the power of something else. This will be take one of the numbers, then you subtract the power. Here, the base are the same. We take one of the base, then we add the power since you are multiplying. When you are dividing, you subtract the power, which means this is S. Let S be 2, let's use 2, or let S be 4 this time around. If I have 4 raised to the power of 3 over, and I have the same number 4 raised to the power of 2, this is the same thing as the base are the same, and we have division. We take one of the 4, subtract the power, you say 3 minus 2. This is the same thing as 4 raised to the power of 1. Most times, you may not get the questions exactly like this, but you see a situation here, you have to use different laws to answer a question, which we will see before the indices, logarithm, and sort aspect is done. In this episode, the next one, the next one, and the next one, we shall continue with indices, logarithm, and sort. So, you have enough time and enough videos to teach you this topic. Now, this is what law theory is trying to tell us. It says that if you have one base now, and that base is raised to the power of a number, and everything is in bracket, then that bracket is raised to the power of another number. Let's call S 5. If S is 5, and M, let's call M 3. If you have 5 to the power of 3, then you have bracket like this. Then another number here. Let's call it 2. So this is the same thing as this form. The law of indices is you can simply use the 3 to multiply 2 to give you 5 raised to the power of 3 times 2 and that is 5 raised to the power of 6. That is what indices is saying. By the time you don't leave your number in terms of power, you give your number as a single answer, then you are moving from indices to something else because indices have to deal with just powers. Then expanding law theory, law theory also say that apart from seeing something like this, 4 raised to the power of 3, let's say 2, to give you 4 raised to the power of 3 times 2, to give you 4 raised to the power of 6, if you have something like this, two different numbers, different bases. So let's call the first one 2, let's call C 3. Times three. Then this one is to the power of one number, let's say raised to the power of one. This one is to the power of let's say four. Then everything is also raised to the power of five. What do you do? The law of indices is trying to tell you that as a bigger boy version of this, yeah, you can use this outside here to multiply each of them. That is what indices is saying. What does that mean? This is something as 2 raised to the power of 5, 1 times 5 is 5, times 3 raised to the power of 20. That is what indices is saying. And here also, if you are applying law 1, you can say the bases are different, obviously. So law 1 will not work. Law 1 only works when the bases are the same. So for different bases, you apply law. And if you have just 2 raised to the power of 1 times 3 raised to the power of 4, you cannot say <laughs> 2. You cannot do something like this, adding the powers. The base are different. You only add power when the bases are the same. Also, an expansion of, expansion of the law says that if you have A over B, different numbers, let's call it 2 over 3, Raise the power of another number, let's say raise the power of 4. This is the same thing as using the power 
to multiply each of the places. So you can say this is the same thing as 2 raised to the power of 4 over 3 raised to the power of 4. This is very valid. And since the bases are different, you cannot use your division law. You cannot say you are picking one and subtracting the power. It won't work. That is interesting law 3. Law 4 told us that if you have a raised to the power of minus 4, this is the same thing as 1 over a raised to the power of 4. This is law of negative power. If I tell you 2 raised to the power of minus 4, this is the same thing as 1 over 2 raised to the power of 4. If I say 3 raised to the power of minus 1, this is the same thing as 1 over 3 raised to the power of 1, which is equal to 1 over 3. If I say 5 raised to the power of minus 8, this is the same thing as 1 over 5 raised to the power of 8. What does it mean? So when you mean minus raised to the power of minus something, change the minus to 1 over, then you put what is here under. 6 raised to the power of minus 3 is 1 over 6 raised to the power of 3. That is the law of negative power. Any meaningful number raised to the power of 0, the answer is 1. When we are dealing with a number basis, we will tell you that let the powers be descending. Anytime you have a meaningful number that is raised to the power of 0, it is 1. So, 2 times 1 raised to the power of 0 is the same thing as 2 times 1. 5 raised to the power of 0 is 1. 10 raised to the power of 0 is 1. Why did I say any meaningful number? Because sometimes you get a situation where you have 0 raised to the power of 0 or infinity raised to the power of 0. So what do we need here? What is 0 raised to the power of 0 and what is infinity raised to the power of 0? I'll come back to that later. The deceased law says that if you have s raised to the power of 1 over 3, this is something as cube root of s. If you have s raised to the power of 1 over 2, this is square root of s. It implies that anytime I give you square root of s, you can change it to s to the power of 1 over 2. Let's change s to a meaningful number. If I say 2 raised to the power of 1 over 2, this is square root of 2. If I say 4 raised to the power of 1 over 3, this is the same thing as cube root of 4. So the one at the bottom form the root, this one will be inside the square root. What if I say 5 raised to the power of 1 over 4? This is the same thing as the fourth root of 5. So this one will be here, this one will be inside here. Then this, the one at the top will be like this. But anything raised to the power of 1, the value remains the same. This brings us to a situation where we need to answer this one. How about you have 5 raised to the power of 2 over 3? How do you answer this? If it were 1 over 3, we will say cube root of 5, right? But since this number is not 1, it is 2. This becomes squared. Everything raised to the power of 2. These are basic laws you should know and you should be able to work with. Indices also says that, okay, this is squared. When you have a over b root to the power of minus c, this is the same thing as b over a root to the power of c. Do you know why? If you have a over b root to the power of minus c, this is the same thing as a over one, this is the same thing as 1 over a over b raised to the power of c. Because minus, raised to the power of minus something will give you 1 over everything there. So this is 1 over a over b raised to the power of c. So when you solve an inverse, you get the inverse of it. 
in practice if you have 3 over 4 raised to the power of minus 2 this is the same thing as 1 over 3 over 4 squared this is the same thing as 1 divided by 3 over 4 squared and we are trying the division to multiplication in the inverse what is in the other side so this becomes and this is also the same thing as 1 divided by 3 squared over 4 squared which is 1 times 4 squared over 3 squared that is 4 squared over 3 squared and uh, that is the same thing as 3 over 4 squared I think this is, is so so interesting and these are the basic rules you need to enjoy mathematics and a relationship between indices and log rhythm is that if you have a raised to the power of log b a let's say you have two raised to the power of log two then three something like this here and the base here are the same the answer is simply the power here three if you have three raised to the power of log three then four this is equal to four everything here we go these are the laws of indices now we've done a lot under the laws of indices and we've answered a lot of questions in the next episode we shall take a look at laws of logarithm and the laws of sort after that we shall start answering questions under indices and logarithm and remember always for your assignment assignment rather at the end of every uh, topic you have to go to the flash in exam app, then search that topic or touch on that topic and answer questions that follow. If you have a problem, you can always reach me on my social media. See you.